Commissioner, we want to tell you thank you very much for coming to the TR and sharing with us your experience and perspectives of the past relating to our conflict period between 1979 and 2003. At this stage, we want to beg your indulgence to take a couple of questions from commissioners so that you may throw further light on some of the issues we may not understand or we want clarification on. But before that, could you also help us with some chronology? You spoke for a long period and uh, most of the times you didn't mention years, like when you came to Morovia, when you travel abroad, when you return, when you joined the True Party, when the year you left the True Party, and all of those. Yeah. First beginning when you came to Monrovia? Well, <clears throat> I made a way on my own to come to Monrovia. I got here in 1959. I came with a presidential yard. I don't know. It was the same time that President Barclay passed. I don't remember the month. 1979. 59. 50. 59, yes. 59. And then I was born November 2nd, 1942. I'm relatively an old man, but being a native man, I can't get old soon. Uh, native Liberian. I don't mean it in a derogatory sense, but I mean that I have a, a stronger physique to survive in Africa. That's what I mean. Uh, I went to America in 1968, I think. Uh, I came back 1971. I graduated in 1970. Mm -hmm. Mama wanted me to walk, walk there. I got a job. But I decided I'd come home. And she asked me, I said, I'm come to look for money. I can't go to education. I so I got here going. So I left her there and came. It was, I got here in 1971. Uh, I joined the People Progressive Pass Party. I, was, I got elected in the Senate. 19, I, I was engaged in the election in 1975. And when I first ran for, to finish the unexpired term of Senate, the late Senator Conway, I did not win. So there were only two years. So I had two years to 75, so that 77 I got to be a Senator. I won the Senate seat by majority vote. Uh, so I was Senator from 77 up to 70, uh, I was in the Senate for about, let's say, a year and some months. So we had election uh, in those days, I think it was in March or October or something. Uh, so 77 and up to 78 and 9, I was expelled from the Senate. Uh, because I went to court, as I told you, uh, which I found to be unfair. Uh, <clears throat> in seventy-seven, uh, seventy-eight, 78, I immediately after I left the True Party, uh, I did not formally resign. I just decided to join the progressive movement. And I didn't like what true party did, so I went around. So I told you looking for somewhere to align with. So I think I joined the PAL movement in 1970, I don't know, 1970, between, the, between 78 and 79, but I would say 79. I, I want to believe it's 78. Because I didn't take long to join PAL. 
So I came out there and I resolved to look for, to do a political. All right. So I worked with the PRC government. I worked with the progressive movement for from 78 all the way to 1980, all the way to 1981. And of course, I think I told you my position. First, I worked in government. I worked with the true part of a senator. Before then, I did work from, from 1970. I came home 1971 from college, uh, from the States. I worked uh, up to 1975. That's when I went to River G. Now you call River G. I went to Grand Jere to run for the Senate, and I moved there. Uh, after 1980, I served. I already told you that, 1980 to 1981, I, I, I left the government because on, on policy differences. I didn't like what they were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, before, after, after that, in 1990, uh, no, uh, Doe got elected 85, right? Okay, I, he appointed, they said they were looking for chief justice to reform the judiciary. So, one matter, Shaman, mm -hmm. she came to my office down here on Johnson Street, uh, corner of Johnson and Broad, and looking, wanted me to come. I had not spoken to Doe for a long time. Uh, so, I went to the mansion, and Doe said he was going to appoint me associate justice. So, I said, okay, so I took the job. We went for confirmation here. This was 1986, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, during the confirmation hearing, the question they were asking me, like the same approbation you have now about what I did, uh, uh, you know, in, as during the revolution, uh, the, the, my own PRC uh, transitional assembly, a high problem, they were questioning me, and this and that. And Doe didn't like it. So Doe said, the same way you're questioning Chipo now, you're going to question us tomorrow. So I'm not even coming making making associate justice, I'll make him chief justice. All the senators went to the mansion, but Doe overruled them and made me chief justice. But when I got in chief, to be a chief justice, I, I, they say I'm a reform. I still got a letter, my appointment letter. There was too much corruption there. The Nambe bench was involved in much corruption. So taking money, selling justice, and this and that, and so forth. Embezzling judicial funding and all of that. So they asked me to reform the judiciary on my letter of appointment. So I embark upon that. I did that from 19, uh, what did I say, 78, huh? 86, my people, thank you. From 86 all the way to, uh, No, I worked just a minister from 1980 to 81, right? They called me back 86. Yes, 86. I worked up to 97. I did. I had the first judicial tour. 87, huh? No. I think it was 88, huh? I left the, 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 the I was stayed there for a year in that chief justice position. Uh, so I left. On policy differences, uh, I resigned. Somebody came to bribe me. That person happened to be the relative of Doe. I grabbed the man, put him in jail. I said, keep him with law. That person was a judge. And judges can be removed from office because of crime. Doe didn't like that. He went and freed the man. So I resigned. He interfered with judiciary. Not that thing we were in the army, your duty, and you tell us. This was democracy. So I resigned. Then, do, then they went and told Do. Then I had a judicial, this first to organize a judiciary, I had a national judicial tour. Went to every county, every court. And we began to build courthouses and other things. So they told him I was a dangerous politician. I could run for president because I'm wide known. I have 
What I did was it was tantamount to that of Topman Executive Council that used to go in all the counties. So plenty of people know me. So the best thing he need to stop me from running for office. So ten days after I resigned, BBC carried the, the 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 thing. It was in the newspaper, Daily Listener, all of that. Then the trumped up uh, legislature, rubber stamp legislature, those wrote them to prepare impeachment proceedings. They prepared it and they cited me. I went there, hired money by a doctor and all of that, and uh, they didn't give me justice. They set up a kangaroo Senate court. And so I walked out. I said, I don't want to be, do what you want to do, but my life is in your hand. If anything happened to me, God will blame you. So I walk out of the Senate after one week, they declare me impeached. I told them I'm not Chief Justice, I already resigned ten days ago. You can't impeach a sitting, I mean a, a, a government. I'm not a slave, I'm not compared to where the Liberian government. I resign. You he appointed me, I resign. Ten days. Then you come and impeach me. That impeachment does not stand. So I this was 1987. Out of 88, 88, I left the, the Supreme Court. Uh, then, uh, since that time, I never worked with the government. I've been pricing law, go to America, come back, you know, this and that. Uh, I did forest business. My house that I got, I didn't get it from government. I don't, I don't care one cent from there. I was doing transparent justice. Maybe I should not have done that. But you do that, you should do that. It's good. That why nobody owes me, I don't owe nobody. You can't tell me nothing. I went into logging. And I went in the bush and slept there three months of vain, 35,000 acres of land for one Lebanese man. And he gave me $25,000. I had then left the chief justice position. I took that money and built my house in Corwell. And sometimes, I can be telling my Muslim, my Muslim, if I didn't build a house, I don't know what I was going to do. Because sometimes we ain't got no money to do anything. How are we going to pay my rent? Maybe I was going to die at early death. But my yard, I got a big yard. I was, when I was in America, we used to visit our law professor houses. They got beautiful land. One house in the center. Sorry, in the center of the estate. And they may well have guardians all over. So I decided that. I bought an acre and a half. And I built my house in the center. So I ain't got problem. I got fence around it. Got gate. <laughs> so I ain't got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs>